This is Luda, one of the dragons created for break by a young artist with exceptional ability. Kieran Williamson is still only 12 years old, yet he created this. And his oils and watercolours of the Norfolk landscape have already brought him fame and fortune. This dragon um, is called Luda. Um, um, during the Anglo-Saxon times, some um, Ludham people um, called Ludham Luda, so we thought it'd be quite fitting. Kieran was only seven when he held his first major exhibition in his home county, Norfolk. Outstanding commercial and critical success has followed. Kieran is now a self-made millionaire. And for him to paint a dragon was a real coup for the charity. Dad said, oh, you've been asked to do a go-go dragon. Um, so I thought it would have been a dragon-shaped canvas, but then we were told it'd fit in the back of our Land Rover, so one of them little ones, um, then it turned out to be this one. <laughs> It was so white um, and such, and so blank. Um, it was quite hard to then get my head around what I was going to plan to do on on the dragon. Any regrets on first sight? Uh, yeah, um, ignorant um, for for me thinking it would be easy. I based it on all on scenes around Ludham or scenes viewed from marshes from of Ludham. Um, so I thought with the Ludham dragon it would be right to put my favourite scenes on to make it special. Going up on the bank um, to where the carp lakes are and you get a really cracking view of the abbey in the carp lakes with this reflection. So hopefully it'll look quite nice with a dull light. Just down the road from the Williamson's Art Gallery are the ruins of St Bennet's Abbey, a place Kieran knows very well and loves to paint. I'll put a tone on it so it takes away that awful white background, so I've got a nice mucky colour to start off with. St Bennet's Abbey is an instantly recognisable local landmark in this part of Norfolk. It's also the site forever associated with the legend of the Ludham Dragon. There was a dragon who um, used to torment the village and then they, they blocked up its hole um, when it was out one day. Um, so it flew to the abbey where the gatehouse was and it made its way into the dungeons where it still lies today, I think. <laughs> You haven't seen it, though. Not yet. <laughs> it's, not, it's going quite well. Um, still a long way to go, so I hope I don't ruin it. It's really hard to know when to stop, because um, you can play with a picture all the time and you just kill it, and then it becomes dead. I think that's it. I think I'm done. <laughs> For a landscape painter like Kieran, working on a 3D large scale dragon has been an interesting challenge. But the subject matter painted on Luda is very familiar territory. I wanted to make Ludham feature in it heavily. Um, because of the myth of the dragon and my favourite sort of bits on the broads. So it's Kieran's Norfolk, is it? Yeah, I think it is my Norfolk. <laughs> um, I started on this side um, with Eric Edwards, the, uh, the late reed cutter. Um, he's sort of like a Ludham legend, so I thought to use a um, triptych of the poses we seen him in the most. Um, sort of him thinking about doing the reed cut and then carrying the reeds away, so I thought it told a nice sort of story. 
This wing is um, Thurn Mill um, that sits on the boards, lovely. And you can't really do a broadening pitch without putting the sail in it, it'd be wrong. So on the front bit, I um, have put Ramworth Church in um, with some sheep grazing on the field and the barn owl, which I regularly see walking around the marshes. And it means like, a lot to me, but it all being Norfolk, so, um, where I've been brought up, and it's the scenes that I love to paint most. I'm glad how it's turned out, because looking at it now, I wouldn't change anything. Another part of the work Blake do that I love to tell people about is their support for children with special needs. And their purpose-built residential home for young people with physical or learning difficulties has been described by parents as a lifeline. Here's why Morley House in Kings Lynn is so important to Cole and his family. Cole is a little boy, he's eight. He loves swimming, the park, sea life centre, drives in the car, television, his iPad, kisses, cuddles, and lots of love. Whoops! <laughs> Cole is a comic. He's a comic. He, he's a tease and a flirt. He will, he will push your buttons, he will test test your, um, your patience. He will, um, he will work things out very quickly on how he can achieve what he wants. And if that means, um, if that means um, being cheeky, he'll do that. <laughs> Cole has Dravet syndrome. It's a severe epileptic disorder. He has multiple seizure types. So he has what's known as a seizure type called a tonic-clonic, which is a convulsive seizure. He has non-convulsive seizures. He has absent seizures, which are stair-like seizures, um, where he becomes unconscious for a brief moment of time. He has myoclonic seizures, which are jerks of the body. And um, he has uh, severe photosensitivity, which is sensitive to light. Oh dear. Cole can drop to the floor and have a seizure. It stops him from doing something that he wants to do. So he may be playing and then he'll put his arm over his face. And the idea is that the seizure's happening in his visual cortex and could be interfering with, with his eyesight. When it happens, we reassure Cole and we pat him on the back and we give him that time to, 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 to get over that small seizure. It's a very small seizure that lasts a few seconds. It used to scare us because we didn't think he was going to live to be two years old. He's got a thing about theme tunes, but he gets obsessive about them. It's EastEnders theme tune and SpongeBob SquarePants, he goes, it's like he's going to pop. I don't see Carl as having disabilities. I don't see Cole as being an invalid. I don't see Cole as being different. The government now used the word special, and I think that's appropriate. And I think um, you cannot define a child by what he can or can't do. Um, and the most important thing that we can give Cole is love. Cole can spend up to 28 nights a year at Morley House. It takes planning and preparation to help him take the change in his routine in his stride. Oh no, what are they going to do? If he knows that there's routine in his daily life, oh then no. that can help him with the control. He knows what's coming next. Where are they going? So we showed him Cole a, a four laminated picture of the front of Morley House with the big, big blue door. And um, we, uh, we keep emphasising uh, Morley House and Morley House. Hello. Hello, Justin. Journey from school is different. So that's another indicator that, he's, that something's different. And then he will only truly know 
100% what's going on when we're at Morley House. See the pictures is just the idea, it's the concept, how much of that he understands we're unsure of. The look of Morley House is a home. Last thing I would want is for it to be a clinical environment. So as it's a home, we pay great attention to it being visually pleasing and have a friendly, caring and fun environment. I'm just setting up Cole's um, books here that he has at home so that he feels um, at home in Morley House. It just makes it easier for him that he knows that the, th you know, the things that he has at home are, are here as well. I think as long as you know that you've done as much as you can, I think that's the most important thing. I think it's something that I would want if I was caught. I hope that they feel safe, they feel loved, and they feel that they're in an environment that they can grow and reach their potential. And so it's like a home from home. The process for Cole coming here took about a year of visits and talking and meetings. We wanted to know from Molly House um, how they were going to support Cole, um, the training that they were going to do and um, the questions that they asked mm -hmm. us as parents um, and how they, were going to, how they were going to facilitate Cole's care. It was really important that we listened to them and they listened to us. I first started to trust Morley House when Cole had his first sleepover. The reassurance came from Cole, his happiness when I came to pick him up. If he was happy um, and I could see that he had enjoyed himself then, we were happy that things were going right. I know that they love Morley House because they show it, they come running through the doors, the parents tell us that they're looking forward to coming. Parents, more than once, in fact quite often, say that we're a lifeline. When Cole's at Morley House, the family are able to do things with my 14-year-old son who could, we couldn't normally do with, with Cole because of Cole's high care needs. But as long as he goes to places where he's going to have fun, playing and laughing and exploring, then he's happy. So going to someone's house for a cup of tea or for dinner or for going to a restaurant to have something to eat, he wouldn't be interested in any of those. Um, so we, um, it's, uh, it's not that we, we don't do those things, we don't do those things with Cole. Morley House is needed in Norfolk by demand of parents and demand of the young people. This is our staff notice board and you can see that we have a good age range with our staff which is really important. It's important to have young, bubbly, energetic staff and it's important to have mature, slightly calmer staff and there's lots of different reasons for that. One of the reasons is we like to have a family environment and in a family you have different ages so you'd have brothers, sisters, aunts, uncles, parents so that works well but also the young people that come here are all very different and we treat them all as individuals. Some of them really love the lively staff running up and down the corridor playing football etc. Others like to snuggle up next to a granny type figure and have a story read and us, that's how we work out our staff team. This is our magic carpet, which we fundraised for last um, year. Very proud of it, and it's very, very popular. It has a variety of programs. This particular one, as you can see, it's interactive. So the young person can either jump on it, and the flowers will move, or they can lay on it, and they'll move around them. It's used for fun, but it's also used for stimulation so we have some young people who might be in a, a wheelchair and able to to walk and they can come and lie on this and watch all the flowers etc come around them it's a brilliant addition to Morley House and they all love it this is called our sensory room and it's a room that we're very very proud of we fundraised for this room and it was updated last year and now it is very, very well used. It's used for a variety of reasons. The first reason that it's used for is for stimulation. So if we have a young person who has quite severe learning disabilities, maybe in a wheelchair, they could maybe come and lie on our, our waterbed, which is warm. 
and be stimulated by the environment that they're in. The other reason that we'd use it for is de-escalation. If you have a young person who's exhibiting quite challenging behaviour, it's quite very heightened, you can come in here with them and it just naturally calming and they can chill out. We say that this is Cole's second home and that's how Morley wants it to be. They do a great job with understanding Cole and Cole's needs. Whoops! <laughs> <laughs>